Okay, so we looked at a simple technique of getting these things across from Max to ZBrush. But what if we've got something like this where we have what is essentially our low poly model and we don't have as much information here. Um, it would be quite handy to be able to make these uh, make this moving work. If I was just to show you the problem really quickly, export this to call this test to unsmoothed. I'll just bring this in so we can see it really quickly. So we've got this. So we can see that we've got this step in around here. And if you remember from the other one, we had the problem where there was a little bit of that showing up. So here, we, this is going to be worse. So if we just follow the technique we did before, where a Dynamesh and I pick something quite high. Dynamesh it. You can see that it's Dynameshed it, it's given all that, that detail, but the problem is, is it's also left this stepping in because it's Dynameshed what it can see. So if we go ahead and try and polish this, it's going to polish, it's going to try and polish each one of these surfaces. Um, so if we go into Deformation, and I try and polish this, it's going to do this and it's going to leave this stepping in. And if I try the more aggressive form of polish, polish it all the way. It improves things slightly, but you can see that step in, so that's less than ideal. However, in the polish we've got other things we can do. Polish by features and polish by groups. However, for polish by features to work you need to have either polygroups or creases in your mesh, which we don't have. And for the groups to work, it would just have to work off polygroups. So if we try either of these things with this model, it won't do anything. Um, and if I try the polish by groups, it's done a polish, but as this is one polygroup, it's all the same color, then it's basically polishing one group as like a normal polish. So what we want to be able to do is be able to use these where we can actually um, start to separate the areas out in the same way that we could do if they were smoothing groups. So the easiest way to do that is if we go back over to here is this any mesh that you make it's like this and um, if you just quickly first thing is to separate the areas that you want to separate as polygroups um, you want them to be uh, different moving groups so if I just go to here select everything and auto smooth it then what we've got is we've got these are all in one poly group, uh, one smoothing group, sorry. Four, these are all in two, so these will all be in the same group. This is in four, we can put this in a new group just to be different. Three, one. So these were all separate smoothing groups, and we can use these smoothing groups. Um, as a way of defining the different areas of the mesh. The way we do that is we just unwrap it really quickly. If we go to, so we put an unwrap UVW modifier on, open UV editor, select all of it, and we're just going to go to this one here, flatten by smoothing groups. That will take the smoothing groups and it will flatten the mesh out into those different smoothing groups. So you can see we've got something like this. Where they sit on the UV sheet, is irrelevant. It's just the fact that they're split up. So if we look, there's one, one side, the other side, the bottom, the back, and it doesn't matter how these are squished or laid out or any of the rest of it. It's just this where these lines are. This is basically saying this is where each one of those moving groups are. So once we've done that, we can now export that. It's too smoothed. So this is our test to smoothed. We can see him. And if we look in our poly our poly groups, we can see that none of that stuff's come through. So uh, which is normal. So what we do is we go to poly groups. And in poly groups, there's this button here, auto groups with UVs. So this basically looks at the UV group, the UVs and how they're split. And for every where there's a UV island, it will give it a poly group. So if I click that, then we can see, let's get a different material on this. We can see that they all have a different color. Uh, so they're all in a poly group. So that's going to be useful for us.
So now that they're all in a different polygroup, we can go and do what we did last time. So we can Dynamesh. Right, there we go. So that's better. Um, but we still have that step in. However, if we go to Deformation now, and we use the Polish by Features, try this one first. These have different settings. Not a lot happens on that one, but if I select the other one, you can see it's starting to smooth out. And we can also polish by groups. And what it should do is give us a smoother result than we've got before. And once we've got it to a point where we're happy and we feel like it's close enough to what we want, then we can do a standard polish. And it'll work exactly the same way. So my advice to you would be that you for the most part, try and keep as much geometry as you can in um, before you bring it into ZBrush because it will help with the process. But if you have got something that's fairly low res, then you can get around it by using either polish by features or polish by groups.